Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. I think this one's going to be the finale of the Blender River Generator course, but there might be a bit more. So I'm wearing the suit because I think it's over, but it might not be over. Um, in the last part, we generated rocks. So if you haven't seen any of the other parts, make sure you watch the whole series because this is going to be building off of that. Um, but we made the rocks and what I want to do now is the foam that we have on the sides here I also want to extend to the rocks So there should be foam around the rocks and a bit of a trail behind each rock So uh, we somehow need uh, to do that all in the uh, shader um, Starting off with the foam around the rock kind of like the boundary of it This is actually super simple. So we're gonna go to the water material and remember we've already created I modified it a little but we have made this mask for where there's going to be foam, so that's what this is. Uh, we just need to modify it so that it's kind of on the rim of each rock. How do we know where the rim is? Well, it's the same thing as in the last tutorial. Uh, we can use an ambient occlusion node. So I'm looking at the ambient occlusion. I want to say make it white wherever there's a lot of ambient occlusion and black otherwise. So I'm going to use a color ramp to flip these. And then all you have to do is bring down the black value. And you can see uh, we've isolated the areas where the rocks are intersecting because that's where there's a lot of ambient occlusion. So a useful uh, little trick. Uh, what we can do is we can add this into our mask and then multiply it by the uh, noise thing. So again, we have our like noise that's everywhere. And now we have our uh, mask that shows where there's gonna be foam. You multiply those and it's gonna show up in both places. So now you can see, it's a little subtle, but if I disable this, there's no foam around the rocks. If I enable it, there is foam around the rocks. And uh, we can make it more intense by playing with the sliders. So now there, there feels like there's a bit more interaction, right? Like the water's hitting this in some sense. Uh, second of all, I wanna make a trail behind the rocks. And this is gonna be a bit complicated um, because we somehow need to have a, a rock detection algorithm that isn't based on ambient occlusion. So here's what I'm going to do. And it's a bit of a kind of a neat trick. So let me just uh, close this panel a little. Uh, what I'm going to do is I need to know what area is behind this rock. A good way to do that is to have the rock flow along the river, right? If this rock goes down the stream, then we know uh, where the foam should be. It's where it's going down the stream. That doesn't make sense, check this out. We're gonna use an extrude mesh. We are going to use our rocks and extrude them. Um, so let's see what that looks like. It looks like a disaster. So you can see it's just making our rocks bigger. Uh, but what I wanna do is not like make them extruding bigger and smaller and all this, but I want them to shift uh, down the stream. So if we know our original curve and we know the tangents of it, in other words, which direction is it flowing, uh, we can extrude along that direction. So going back to the curve here, uh, where remember we have a curve, uh, we can use another capture attribute to capture the tangent. Again, the reason I'm doing this is I wanna bring the tangent deeper into the process where we can extrude along the tangent. In other words, shift it. And I'm bringing this all the way to the extrude mesh into the offset. And you can see now the rocks are flowing down the stream. Right? So if I just do a bit of a negative value, you can see the rocks are, are flowing a little. Uh, if we extrude the edges, this is going to let us kind of like extend them in this sense. So it's almost giving us the trails. And if we now scale elements, so this is just a neat trick that I'm like, how am I going to detect trails? You don't want to use geometry proximity because you only want the th stuff behind it. Uh, so I came up with this. We're going to scale elements on the top and pinch these down. So you can think of this as like we're generating cones that go downstream from the rocks. And yes, at this point we do use a geometry proximity. So we're saying, look at how close uh, we are to this geometry and send this uh, distance uh, into the shader editor. So I'm gonna store named attribute and I'm gonna call this distance. So in theory, if I now view, so these rocks, these extruded rocks are just made for the calculation. Uh, for the final viewing, we're still going to have our normal rocks. Uh, but in theory, uh, we'll see if it works in practice. We can now take our attribute, type in distance, which is the thing we store named attribute for. And I guess uh, we do need to do this as part of the main chain. So I'm going to store named attribute here. 
If we look at the distance in the rendered view, you can see nothing, <laughs> which isn't, uh, isn't ideal. Uh, let's see, do we want to switch one of these? Uh, why is it not working? Somebody tell me. Okay, I think we put the store named attribute again in the wrong spot. It should be on the river object, not on the rock. So let's see if that changes anything. So I'm gonna do this. And now you can see we have a distance function uh, that shows the trails of these. Um, again, I wanna do a bit of an inversion. Luckily I figured it out. I was gonna be like, oh, do I have to re-record this tutorial? <laughs> that would suck. Uh, I'm gonna bring this black down so you can see these actual trails and it is gonna be kind of a tight fit. So there is our trails. Um, I want to, I don't know what I was saying before, but I want to take these trails and mess them up a bit in the same way that we added distortion to other parts of this. Uh, to do that, uh, luckily in our geometry proximity, we have a position kind of uh, attribute. And if we take this position and do the same kind of noise trick that we've done before, so I'm going to mix this position with a kind of a distorted version of it with the noise. Uh, luckily, we should be able to kind of mess with this. So when this is set to zero, we have our trails. And as we add a bit of distortion, you can see it's breaking up the pattern, especially if we bring up the scale uh, to something large with a bit of uh, detail. Uh, let's see what this looks like. So we're just kind of making our trails a bit choppier. Um, we take this, we add it to our foam mask. So now again, this is saying where there's gonna be foam. And now you can see there's actually uh, trails of water or foam trails behind the thing. I'm happy with that. Um, maybe something to do is have this evolve over time as well. Uh, so I'm going to do a hash frame over 100. And let's see what this looks like. Yeah, this way it's nice and evolving. And maybe we can make it a bit slower over 300. And yeah, now we have a foam. Uh, selected where we want it. So it's going to be on the rim of the rocks and on the trail behind. And remember, uh, all of this is based on our extruding function. So if we extrude it less, if I can find where that is, if we extrude it uh, less, the trails are going to be shorter. Or sorry, they're going to be longer if I do it in that direction. So here I'm making the trails longer. And here I'm making it shorter. And maybe uh, something to consider is to randomize this. So I'm going to do a random value between negative 0.3 and 0 so that they don't all have the same distance. So before, after, maybe it changes something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but there you go. That is kind of it. If I think of other things to do with this river to add realism, then I will make a part 7, I believe. Uh, but I'm pretty happy uh, with the way this looks, and I, I'm just doing the uh, circle test because I always love the way this looks. Yeah, so now that our stream is going, maybe it's easier to see in solid view. It is getting glitchy, <laughs> not gonna lie, but uh, you can see it's going this way. Um, okay, so I think I'm happy with this, kind of an awkward ending, but what are you gonna do? Uh, thank you so much for watching, and if there's more, uh, leave it in the comments, like, oh, maybe there should be leaves going down the stream or something. Uh, let me know, and I will uh, make sure to incorporate it. Other than that, uh, that is the end of the tutorial series.